All right, so we're here at my house and I told Josie I have an issue and that is it. <laughs> so she's come down the hill, which isn't easy to get her down the hill. <laughs> oh my God. And she's going to help me solve this problem by putting a nice system down at the end of the hallway where my kids can put their backpacks. So this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a little bit different. Usually we base coat in our chalk paint and then apply the transfer. Right. But this one, with this full on poster size transfer, and it's gonna go out to the edges of the board. We're not going to base coat, right? No, we're not. Actually, it's gonna be a really cool shortcut version okay. of what we usually do for a full project. That's gonna be fun, but you know what I think we should do is use our new um, distressing stamps to with paint to add touches of paint in the distress patterns. Ooh, I love that idea. Yeah. And yes. let's kind of go a little bit on the heavy side on distressing the transfer, I think. I agree. I agree. What if we did, I like to do this on our fine art paintings that we do. What if we added a band on the outer edge of the plywood of a bold color like, Ooh, like red. red? Yeah. Bam. Okay. Plywood, sandpaper, mount. Hooks. Don't get distracted. You. You. Got you. 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 Okay. First, we're gonna go to the plywood section where it all begins. Which, which is, is there? Lumber. Lumber. So here's the thing. That's gonna be twenty bucks. Let's look at how much the full sheets are. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty pricey. Okay, sis. So let's do this. Let's do this. We can get a half a sheet here of the three quarter inch. It's essentially 48 by 48. So we can get two pieces out of this, which is a better value than going the pre cut small. I agree. Help Let's me load it. this bad boy up. I think you're good. You're so strong. <laughs> you think I'm good? <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. This is a good side. We don't have a bunch of knots. On the back side, there's knots and that wouldn't have worked, but this is good and smooth. This will totally work. Okay, let's find a cutter guy. Come on. Let's find our cutter guy. Wait, how did I end up pushing the cart? Mm -hmm. So we went with these or we went with those? Whichever you okay. want. They're going back. <laughs> I We're took too long. This one. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started. We've got all of our supplies, and we've got our board, which is 24 by 34, the exact size of our transfer. This is our full color transfer. Yes. IOD decor transfers. Mm -hmm. And this one is 24 by 34. So it's perfect for the board. We had yes. cut just to size. And our plan is to go ahead, after we've prepped the board, we're going to apply it. We're going to put the hooks in place afterwards for this whole board. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Okay. We've got rough edges because when mm. they do that initial cut, it's you know it's yeah. a rough cut, and we want to go ahead and get rid of any splinters and rough edges, any bumps or splinteries on here. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, it's super important that we get all of the dust off of here. So let's yes. take it outside and knock it off. We don't Why want to get- Why is that important? Because the transfers have work with an, a fine film and an adhesive. If you get dust on that adhesive before it's uh, adhered to your background- Again, no bueno. No bueno. It so let's make sure adhere. this is nice and clean. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take this in there. So we've got our piece of plywood sanded and tacked down so it's completely clean and dry mm -hmm. and it's time to apply our IOD decor transfer. 
So there's a few little tips that you want to keep in mind when using any of our decor transfers and that is you want to keep it with the, the backing that it comes with until you're ready to apply it exactly. because like we said before there's you don't adhesive. want any dirt and debris to get on the back of your actual transfer. Correct. Otherwise, it's not going to adhere to your project. Exactly. So when we take this off of the backing, we're then going to hover it over the surface and position it visually before we lay it down and have it. They are delicate, mm -hmm. and so you need to handle them with care, like we said, and keep them with this backing until you're ready to apply them. Sometimes you'll have little bits and pieces of them that may stick to the backing or so forth, so just be careful when you're taking them off. Now, let's turn it around, oh, handling it very carefully, right? Mm -hmm. So once you're down, you want to commit and then use your hands to gently press the transfer into place. You'll start to see many times a color change as it's adhering. You can see how it changes just because the film is separating from this plastic backing and adhering to the surface. And as you're applying the transfer, you can periodically pull away from the edges and see how it's taking. So you can see here, actually, that it's taking quite well. Yeah. Ooh, that is beautiful. Very nice. All right, let's okay. keep on getting it transferred. So you can see these are really quick and easy to do. They add a really impactful design element to your projects in a simple and clean, fuss-free way. So every once in a while, just pull your backing back to see how it's laying down. It's laying down quite nicely. Okay, so I just want to show you here. So as you pull it up and you see that, oh, it's not adhering. It's right here, put it right back down and then use your tool to then rub it on. Just apply more pressure. Just until apply it more does. pressure until it does, yeah. Alternately, some people like to have uh, some torn edges on depending yeah. on the look they're going for. Exactly. So you can leave it too if you want. All right, I think we're ready to move the sheet. Let's do it. All right. Wow. <gasps> it's pretty. Oh, it's pretty. So pretty. Now, let's go ahead and take the sand Sanding oh block and just that knock so pretty. Knock the edges gently off because the transfer on is just a hair over the edge on the control side. So simply do this. Mm -hmm. Be be gentle and go away from the design, not into it when you're doing the edges. Kind unless, of knock off the edges. Unless you're intentionally wanting to stress. Right. to distress some of it, which a lot of people do because these distress really well. That's one of their cool features. Ooh, careful. Okay, so next we're going to distress, distress, with our new distress stamps. What was, what was that for? Well, because we're not actually distressing it. We're uh, adding paint onto it that looks like distress. That's, that's what it. that was for. Okay. So we have three different new distress stamps. The first is our all over distress, mm. which gives a really cool salvage look to it. Right. Then we have our edge. It's really cool if you're trying to make something look like metal. You can use this with like a rust color. 
amazing. Yes. Then we have our edge distress stamps, mm -hmm. which is six different strips that have different, um, just variations of distressed edges. And they're, they're on both sides, both edges of the strip. So you have a lot of mileage there. And then we have our craculeur. Our crackle stamp. Whatever. It's, a, it's fine, a crackle stamp. It's a fine porcelain type crackle that you can get a really nice, subtle, um, soft crackle mm -hmm. in there, and it's just beautiful. So today, what do you think we should use the edge distress? I'm feeling definitely the edge distress. Okay. For sure. And then, yes, I want the all over. Oh, okay. And one of the reasons that we wanted to go with a, the distress stamp, and this is a great way to use them is we didn't want to take the time to base coat our project first, but this way we get that layering effect without having to paint the entire thing. We yes. pop on the distress stamps on the top. Oops. Ooh, that's really rich. Isn't it? Yes. Okay, so what we do is we put a little puddle of the paint on a either a silicone or acrylic mat, and then we want to get an even load so that it's generous, but it's not sloppy. It's not drippy and sloppy, okay? So we just kind of pushed the excess out of the way. We'll use that and draw it back in when it's time to reload. Now, there's different options for mounting, mm -hmm. and we're just going to go bare today. I want to go ahead and apply it evenly onto the stamp. Now we are going to, about right here, sis? Yeah, that looks okay. good. Okay. There we go. And just use our hands gently without press. shifting it. Right. Go ahead and make sure that you make even contact with it. And then go ahead and pull up. Ooh. Isn't Ooh, that awesome? Yes, yes. And what's awesome about these two is we'll go in and we'll get a nice border of distress around it, but then you can layer them if you want mm -hmm. to. Different colors, mm -hmm. so add for, in some different colors, maybe some rust. Yeah. There's a lot of different Now here's what I wanted to techniques. tell you about. I, I mentioned that each of the strips was two-sided. Rather than make this a flush, perfect straight edge on the design, we did it so that it was also irregular so that you could then get twice the design value out of each strip, for example. So let's go ahead and do this portion right here. And we're done. Done. Now. Now I'm wondering about the all over. I really, this I is how it works. Every stage, we're like, I like it just like this. It looks great how it is, exactly. But then you just continue to add and it does get even better with every layer. Yes, it just adds a layer of richness. Now, here's one of the tricks with using this mat because it's a square and there's a definite edge to it. You don't necessarily want most of the time to have a square of this mm -hmm. pattern. So right. what we want to do is go on irregularly with our paint. So mm -hmm. let's just kind of do this. Okay. Okay. And then when we lay it down, Lay it down carefully. She likes to say, tickle it. Just tickle it on. <laughs> You're not even getting out towards those edges. <gasps> oh, I love that. Right? I do, I love that. Just tickle it. Perfect. I like that. Let's just do it itty bitty there. 
Wow. It's pretty. We like it. All right. Should I tickle? I can do it. Okay. Or you can. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Isn't it pretty? Here? Sure. Okay. sure. I'm gonna lay this down. <gasps> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Adding all of that distress and layering adds warmth and character to the piece and just gives it a story. You know yeah. what I mean? It just gives it gives it a little more history and, and yep. story. All right, let's paint that edge and yeah. get this puppy hung up. Oh, we gotta add the hooks. So let's yes. paint the edge, add the hooks, and get it mounted. Awesome. So now we've measured out our spacing and we're going to add our hooks. All right, you guys, that's it. Thanks for watching another episode of IOD TV. Until no. next time, go make something beautiful.